Does it work to tell the truth without apology? Like, how powerful are words, really? Very. Whoever said very is absolutely right. So, without getting boring about it, but last uh, spring, this spring, I decided I had been grown up in this sort of ridiculous uh, Christian faith um, that no longer really exists called the Episcopal Church, which is basically just total Wicca now, just pure paganism. And so I spent my whole life in this and I was like, I went to the schools and brought my kids to the schools and went to church on Sunday. And I was like, the one thing that we never talked about in church ever, I don't think was the Bible. That was for like the snake handlers or whatever in the South you're reading the Bible. We didn't have that at all. We had a ton of cocktails. A lot of like, you know, our social program, we're helping the homeless. Every year there'd be more homeless. My church would buy tents for the homeless, then they'd triple in size. They'd be like, I'm glad the homeless have tents, but now there are three times as many homeless. Are we really helping? Shut up. Anyway, so I spent all these years in this church before finally escaping uh, with my life. And I thought, oh, I've never read the Bible, so I should just read it and see what's in there. I'm not going to do a Bible study, I just want to read it. So I'm almost done. It's been amazingly interesting. But one of the things I notice in this book, especially in the, the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, is there are all these groups I've never heard of before. The Hittites and the Ammonites, none of the big ones, the Assyrians still exist, the Babylonians still exist, or none, but there are all these different groups. And they're not small groups. They were like in charge of the world, of the known world at the time. They had massive armies that rolled into cities and enslaved everybody, and then they disappeared. And there's no remnant, so I, I'm sitting there reading the Bible with my Wikipedia on the side, like, who are the Ammonites? Answer, no clue. We have no idea who a lot of these people were. No clue. And they were in charge of the known world. It wasn't that long ago, it was like 3,000 years ago, they ran everything, and now we're not even sure where they lived. And they had the most advanced weapon systems in the ancient world. And they're totally gone and we can only guess as to their identity. You am one of them. You're an Assyrian. Yes. The Assyrians were no one to be trifled with at all. Congratulations, you had fierce ancestors. Um, so we don't have any physical evidence of even the existence of a lot of these groups, but you know what we do have? is the description of them in words. And those words, that document, forms the basis of Western civilization. That is Western civilization, is the Bible. What is Western civilization? It's the Bible. That's what it is. I mean, I had no idea. I made it to 53 without knowing that. I think that information was hidden from me. But it tells you that the power of those words far exceeded the state-of-the-art military power of every civilization in history. They are gone, but the words remain. And the words continue to change people and to change the world. So what matters? What matters is telling the truth in words. It's not enough to think it. It's essential to articulate it, to say it out loud. And when you do that, remarkable things happen. And this is true even in your personal life. Certainly you've been in an argument with someone you love, and the person will say something good or bad, and everything will change. If you're in an argument with someone you love and you say something horrible, particularly if it's true about that person, that will affect your relationship for the rest of your life. You can't take those words back. If I get in a fight with my brother and I punch him in the face, may have happened, everybody sobers up and it's fine. But if I say something truly cruel about him that is true, our relationship will never recover. The words are more powerful than the actions. And that is exactly why they're trying to control your words. And that's exactly why the First Amendment precedes the second. There is a reason in the order. It's not just that it's nice to say what you think and that it's essential to human dignity to be able to express what you really believe, though that is true. You cannot be a full citizen if you can't say what you think. You are instead a slave. 
do it. If you're not allowed to say what you think, you are not a citizen, you are a slave. It's that simple. And you don't need physical shackles because you have them in your hand already.